Now we're entering into the second part of Chapter 1, Marketing Metrics. As you work through this workbook of quantitative tools and techniques in marketing, you'll notice that each chapter begins with an exploration of a statistical technique and then ends with an exploration of a specific marketing metric or measurement that we will take in marketing, often coming out of a statistical technique that helps people make marketing decisions. Our first one we'll look at is called the Category Incidence Frequency. The Category Incidence Frequency answers a basic question. On average, how often does the, quote, average person purchase a product or from a product category? And I'll say, quote, average because it's the Category Incidence Frequency might lead to things like saying, there's, on average, the American family has 1.8 children. Well, no family has eight-tenths of a children or 1.8 children. Uh, so the average isn't exactly what you're going to find out there in the market. It's saying that on average, a lot of families have two children. Some have one, some have none, and some have several, several more. But on average, if you look at the average family, how many children do you expect to see? Maybe around 1.8. So that's what we're talking about, is on average, well, how often does a person interact with a product category? Now, why would we use this? Well, suppose you know that there's, on average, one pot roast sold, in a, sold per family per month in a town, and you go to another town, and you want to know how many pot roasts will be sold? We'll just count the number of families and multiply the two. Very simple metric, very useful for comparing and predicting sales within a category or of a specific product or the potential sales of a product within a new territory or a market. To calculate the category incidence frequency, we're going to take a weighted average of the incidence frequency. This will be our first time we're taking weighted averages. Learning how to take weighted averages is a very key requirement for conducting quantitative methods in marketing. It is a standard tool, weighted average. So pay attention, it'll make your life much easier. So here's an example of data that would be collected to try to calculate the category incidence frequency. Suppose a researcher goes out and says, all right, how often do you eat a pot roast? and collects the following data. They ask, basically, you only get to answer in two ways. I eat it once every two months or two times a month. Now, in reality, if you ask people how often do you eat a pot roast, you'll get far more variation in the answers than once every two months or two times a month. For instance, there's a category of never, the categorical answer of never, the nominal answer of never. Why would they say never? Because they're vegetarians or they just don't like pot roast. And maybe some people eat pot roast every day, so it'd be much higher. Now, rather than go into all the details of the possible answers, for our very first category, categorical incidence frequency calculation and our very first weighted average, I think we should keep it very simple. So they ask people, how often do you eat pot roast? They could answer once every two months, or two times a month. Very simple survey. Keep it simple for our first time through. In terms of answers, 62 people said once every two months in this sample, and 25 people said two times a month in this sample. So this is our response frequency. From this data, we have to calculate, on average, how many pot roast a month are sold. Well, to do this, we first have to take our possible categorical answers once every two months or two times a month and interpret them. So I'm going to, uh, excuse me, I'm going to type here. Interpretation of incidence frequency. We have to interpret this data. This header doesn't look so good for the column, so I'm going to widen the column by right-clicking on this little bar and stretching it out just a little bit. So there we go. Interpretation of incidence frequency. On a monthly basis, we 
you have to choose a t standard of time. Since I've collected it on once every two months or once or two times a month, it seems like month would be the standard of time. We could do it on a daily, we could do it on a yearly, we could do it on a weekly. I think for this data set, it'd be easiest to work with months since we have both of these data being both of these answers being given on a monthly basis. So interpretation of the incidence frequency. Once every two months. Okay. Now on a monthly basis, if I eat a pot roast once every two months, how many pot roast a month do I eat on average? Well, I eat once every two months. So every month, I'll eat a half a pot roast. This people, these 25 people, said they'll eat it two times a month. So on a monthly basis, how many pot roasts would they eat? They would eat two pot roasts a month. Very straightforward interpretation. So 62 people eat a half a pot roast a month. 25 people eat two pot roast a month. So now let's make another call. I'll call it pot roast per month for the group, and this would be 62 people times a half, so that's 31 people eating this pot roast a month. I'm going to take this entire formula, notice it's taking cell B2, which is the response frequency, and cell C2, which is the interpretation. I'm going to take the entire cell, copy, go down one, and paste. There we go. And I've since learned that this is also called copy, and here you can do hit paste. You can do it either way you wish to do it. So 31 pot roasts will be sold a month to this group, this group. And on the two times a month group, I'm selling 50 pot roasts a month. So in terms of total, total, I will be selling, I'm going to use sum, the addition of these two groups. 81 pot roasts. So I'm selling 81 pot roast to my sample. How many people are in my sample? It's the sum of these two. I have the formula here. I can copy and paste the entire formula. Oops, try again. Copy and paste the entire formula. We got 87. 62 and 25. 2 and 5 make 7. 6 and 2 make 8. So it makes sense. So 87 people in my sample buying 81 pot roast a month on average, so I have my category incidence frequency. It says, oh, that doesn't look so good. I am going to take off the wrap text and I'm going to retype this wrap text. Wrap text is off. Delete. CIF. There we go. Category. Ah, now I know what was going on. Okay, so there's my category incidence frequency. Merge and center. No. Category incidence frequency. Category incidence frequency. Okay. It still seems to want to wrap that text. I wish it would. So I need my category incidence frequency. I'll stretch this column. And spell incidence properly. I need my category incidence frequency. I know I have 81 pot roasts being sold to 87 people. So on average, I am selling 81 pot roasts per 87 people. I'm selling 0.93. I don't have that much accuracy out of a sample of only 87. So I sell on average 0.93 pot roast per person. So that's my category incidence frequency. So this is our first time to do a weighted average. I want to go through it again, but this time go through it a little bit slower uh, because there are four other ways we can calculate this. What did I do? I started out by taking my response frequency here and my response items there. And I said, okay, once every two months, 62 people said that. Two times a month, 25 people said that. Once every two months means that they eat a half a pot roast a month. I interpret. Two times a month means they eat two pot roast a month. I'm interpreting. So that's where this part comes from. Finally, I find for this group how many pot roasts that will eat. And there's 62 times 
a half a pot roast a month. So it's that group eats 31 pot roast a month. 31 pot roast a month for this group, 50 pot roast a month for this group. So I'm eating a total of 81 pot roast out of 87 people. So my category incidence frequency is 81 divided by 87, which you'll see right here. For 81, the blue cell is being divided by 87, the green cell. Okay. Think about just the math. Now you got the logic. What are they doing the math? I took the products. See? Product. I added it, added up the products. There's the sum. And divided by the sum of the responses. Let's say that again. I took the product here of the response frequency and the meaning of that response. Took the sum of those products here and divided by the sum of the response frequency there. Got it? Now I'm going to show you how to do that quicker. I'm going to copy all of this, just paste it down here. I'm going to paste special just the values. There we go. So here's my response frequency. There's my response item. I'm just going to call this frequency for F and interpret, interpret here. And we have interpreted once every two months to be a half a pot roast a month and two times a month to be two pot roast a month. So now I can actually calculate my category incidence frequency in one step. How do I get 0.93? Again, go back here. I took the products of my response frequency and my interpretation, the product of my response frequency and interpretation, added it up, then added up the total number of responses, divided the, the sum of my products of my response frequency and my interpretations by my sum of my response frequencies. So more quickly, equals this times this, copy, paste, equals sum of this, divided by the sum of this. 0.93. You see it in one. You see it right there. Notice I'm using this little tool up here at the top palette to change the number of decimals. I think that's enough decimals. And I said I could do this in one step. Notice what I'm doing. Products, sum, divided by the sum. Okay? I know I've messed that up. Now I said I could do this in one step. The tool is, let's use the word sum, because I'm going to take a sum of products. You notice Excel has a function called sum product. It returns the sum of the products of the corresponding array, range, or arrays. Open parenthesis. So here's my array of my response frequencies. Put a comma. Here's my array of my interpretation. And that will give me my sum of my products of my response frequency and my interpretation. Watch. 81, which is what I had up here. And I said I could do this in one step. I divide my sum of my products of my response frequency and my interpretation by my sum of my response frequencies, divided by the sum of my response frequencies. 0.93. See? I did it in one step. With Excel, you can find that you can do it with many steps or with one steps, it depends on how familiar you are with the tool. And I encourage you to become very familiar with the tool to make your life easier. So there we have it. Our category incidence frequency for pot rows for this sample is 0.93. I said four ways. Here's our next way. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here. Now, this time I'm going to paste special because I'm going to paste the column width so that everything looks pretty. And I'm actually going to delete my response frequencies because I'm going to call it probability this time. That's not probability, P R O B A B L I T Y. There we go. That's probability. 
you're not always given raw response frequency. Sometimes some research will already have done some research and it's just giving you probability. We need to calculate our category incidence frequency from raw data that just simply says the probability, well, this is no longer raw data, but from managed data that says the probability at which you will get this response. So let's calculate our probability. 62 divided by 60 is 87. There we have it. Put it in percentage format. I'm going to put the dollar sign in front of the row number for the denominator, which is the total. So that stays constant as I copy it from row to row. All right. Our interpretation. Interpret. It's still the same. 0.5 for once every two months and 2 for two times a month. And we can still do our products for pot roast per month. And that would be the 0.5 times 71%. Here, now we find our total equals the sum of these two parts. And I want you to notice that already I'm going to put it in this comma format. Already I have my category incidence frequency. When given the probability, I didn't have to divide the sum of these products by the sum of my responses. Why? Well, what is the sum of my responses? You can look down here, see it's 100%, or you can just copy and paste this to see you got 1. And whenever you divide 1 into a number, you get the same number. So you don't have to divide by what? When given just the probability answers, all you have to do is take the products, as I did here, see, products, and then sum them up. Or, in one step, copy, paste, category, incidence, frequency, in one step, take the sum of the product of my probability of getting a response and my interpretation of those responses. 0.93. Change the style, and once again we have the answer. So that's four different ways of, of calculating the category incidence frequency. In each case, we were really taking a weighted average. We we're using the response frequency, multiplying it by the interpretation, finding the sum of that, and dividing it by the sum of the response frequency. And again, over here, the weighted average. The probability of a response times the interpretation. Multiply it up, add it up, and that is the overall average response, 0.93. Probability times interpretation. The sum product will give you the answer. A weighted average. Each time you weight the, the interpretation of those responses, by the response frequency or the probability of getting that response. So you weight the meaning of that response by the probability of getting that response and find the average from there. From this example, people following along in the book should be able to do the pasta exercise the split pea soup exercise, and the chicken exercise. Because we've looked at sums and sum products, I suspect you can also take a look at your very first data set of a firm's performance. Good luck, and we'll see each other again in Chapter 2.